Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. We're here, we're here. <sighs> okay. My name is Abigail Vega, and I'm the producer of the Latinx Theater Commons. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the 2018 LTC Carnival of New Latinx Work. Wow, we're here. We are so thrilled that all of you are here with us this morning and are spending a part of your valuable summer with us. We want to start today by acknowledging the occupied land we are standing on, and to do that, I am pleased to welcome Lucas Garcia to the stage. Lucas is a Chicago-based playwright, artist, and arts writer, one of our fantastic carnival dramaturgs, and an ALTA host committee member. Please join me in welcoming them to the stage. Good morning, everyone. Great. How do we feel today? Great. Great. Good. I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to see you all here. Um, and I'm so, so excited for you all to see all the things that we've been cooking up. It's been, we have some incredible teams, and I'm so excited for you all to join us. Finally, um, we get to put up what we've been bearing down on. Um, I apologize, uh, this will be in English. Um, just so you know a little bit about me, uh, my name is Lucas Dionisio Garcia, that's my grandfather's name, which is why I trip over it a little bit. Um, and I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've lived in Chicago, hello. <laughs> um, I've lived in Chicago for about three years um, and I'm deeply grateful to all of the people who were waiting for me when I arrived um, because without them, it would be a very different Lucas who's standing up here. Um, I've brought with me a few items um, that I use in my own spiritual practice to help me out today, um, and I'd like to share them with you. Um, I have white sage that I used during a process where I was interviewing the elders of my family about my grandparents, um, who I did not get a chance to know. I'm gonna put it on the floor. I have dirt from the Santuario in Chimayo in New Mexico. Um, it's a place with a complicated history, um, and I traveled there um, when I was younger in pilgrimage. Um, I have an alebrije of a roadrunner, um, state bird of New Mexico. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a bird that's been sort of a constant presence in my life um, and who I hold as a guardian and a companion. Um, I also have a pine cone, um, which was given to me by my mother. Um, she sends me one or two every once in a while, and I'm not really sure why. Um, <laughs> but I love her very much, um, and so I keep them. I'm sure many of you have attended conferences and gatherings that have been opened with a land acknowledgement. Um, for those of us who have not, um, it was important to ALTA and the LTC that we demonstrate our solidarity with indigenous people on this land, this continent, and around the world, and that we hold the reality of indigenous life and stewardship in our minds and hearts as we do the work we do. Being Latinx is complicated. Um, our shared history of colonization and imperialism and migration has created a rich and deep cultural well full of joy, beauty, pain, and violence. Many of us have indigenous roots from up and down the land on this side of the planet. Many of us have reached out to our ancestors, visited our ancestral lands, and have a practice of stewardship, healing, and spirituality. I say this not to create divisions and tears of Latinidad, um, but to recognize the history and the energy that is in this room today. Grappling with what it means to be Latinx in these United States on this occupied land is unique for every person, and it is my sincere belief that there is room enough for all of us to be on those journeys. My people um, are not from this land that we're standing on, and 
Because of that, I cannot welcome you here because it's not my land to welcome you to. I would not presume to do so um, in the stead of someone who can. I offer this practice um, and these acknowledgments to all of you as a way of remembering, listening, and loving. So everything coming after this is an invitation, um, and it's open, and you can feel free to participate or not. Um, but it would mean so much to me if you did. Um, but it's up to you. I invite you to take a deep breath or two and to close your eyes if you wish. If you have the consent of the people next to you, please feel free to hold each other's hands, to hug each other, or to lean against one another. Softness, care, and tenderness are also resistance. Call to mind your ancestors, your elders, the people who make you feel courageous, who move you to work, who inspire you to be open. Imagine their face, their hair, their eyes. Remember the way they make you feel. Breathe into the openness and abundance within yourself and invite the sky to fill you. We acknowledge the land on which we stand and the peoples who have lived and still live here despite the brutality of colonialism and white supremacy. We acknowledge the life, voice, and struggle of indigenous people across this continent and throughout the world, especially those who are fighting for environmental and social justice. The land on which we work and many of us live has been stolen from its original peoples and traditional stewards, the Miami, the Illinois, the Peoria, and the Potawatomi. We are creating, performing, and working on stolen land and in the midst of ongoing injustice. We acknowledge the enduring connection that indigenous people have to their ancestral territories and strive to continue to foster enduring relationships within our local communities. There is much beauty and joy in this city, and there is also much struggle. We acknowledge the space in which we do this work and the forces of racism and classism that fuel gentrification and displacement, uphold white supremacy, and enforce its systems. We give thanks for the life and journeys of our queer, indigenous, and immigrant ancestors and elders and hold their names and faces in our hearts. We give thanks to all who have come before us, who have lived and loved and fought for peace, justice, and freedom. We give thanks for the joyful resistance happening right now all across the city and in our home communities. In convening here, with our many varied backgrounds and experiences, it is my sincere hope that our collective energy vibrates along the connections we form and moves in all of us a feeling of courageous unity. There is work to be done. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you so much, Lucas. Uh, what a beautiful way to enter this space. My energy is very different. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to Chicago. Welcome to this space. We are so glad you're here. My name is Lisa Portes. I head the directing program here. Thank you. 
I head the directing program here at the beautiful theater school at DePaul University, and I serve as champion of the LTC Carnaval of New Latinx work. First, a few words about the LTC. For those of you who don't know, the LTC stands for the Latinx Theater Commons. For those of you who don't know, Latinx is the term for men, women, trans, and non-binary people of Latin American descent. And we are a commons. That means we are a virtual, digital, and actual public square. By being part of this event, you are a member of the commons. If you go to our Facebook page, read an article on, the, on our digital platform, Cafe Onda, comment on our website, you are a member of the commons. Truly anyone with anything to say or do, I gotta keep looking down, anything to say or do in relation to Latinx theater who chooses to use this public square is a member of the commons. The Commons uses a horizontal rather than a vertical power structure. There is no artistic director, president, CEO, executive, anybody, anybody. We are run by a steering committee of 60 Latinx theater makers from around the country who volunteer their time and minds to advocate for Latinx theater as central to the American theater. Our work is facilitated by our LTC producer, the unstoppable Abigail Vega. My title is Champion of the LTC Carnaval. Each of our events has a champion or co-champions. The champion serves as the kind of lightning rod for the event, but there's a whole lot more people involved. So let me show you how this works. If you are a member of the Carnaval Selection Committee, would you please stand up? I know we've got some. Don't hold your applause, hold your applause. Hold your applause, because this is going to go on. If you are a member of the Carnival Outreach Committee, please stand up. Outreach, that's you, Diane. Outreach, yes, Danielle. If you're a member of the Carnival Programming Committee, please stand up. Programming, yes. And can we get house to half? Can we get half? Thanks. Uh, uh, Carnival Programming Committee, please stand up. Resource Generation, please stand up. Resource Gen. Carnival Host Committee, please stand up. If you're Abigail Vega, please stand up. <laughs> Okay, all these LTC folks, along with their colleagues who you'll see lifted in the program, are involved in creating the Carnaval, but stay standing. There's more. We gotta bring up our producing partners. If you're a member of ALTA, the Alliance of Latinx Theater Artists in Chicago, please stand up. What about Teatro Vista? If you're Teatro Vista, please stand up. That's right. If you're a member of the theater school, including our Carnaval staff and volunteers and deans, please stand up. <laughs> and stay standing. Now let's now include our partner theaters. If you're a member of Urban Theater Company, please stand up. Aguijon, please stand up. Tlata, the Chicago Latino Theater Alliance, please stand up. Stand, stand. <laughs> Victory Gardens Theater, please stand up. Steppenwolf Theater, please stand up. If you're one of our Latina uh, Diosa casting directors and you're here right now, please stand up. Not yet, okay. If you're a member of the Carnaval Advisory Board, we thank you and please stand up. And if you're watching, we thank you. And if you're with HowlRound, by God, please stand up. <laughs> and finally, if you are here because you are excited and curious about Latinx theater, please stand up. <laughs> Look at you! You are all the people who have made Carnaval happen. Turn around, wave at the camera. We're live on HowlRound. Woo! Now, please stay standing for one more minute. Imagine a silver thread connecting all of you to one another and to our friends watching at home. That's the commons. Have a seat. Now, of course, none of this would be possible without the generosity of our partners, the Chicago Community Trust, the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, the Field Foundation, and the Mellon Foundation. You know, the longer I'm in this field, the more I'm filled with admiration, wonder, and gratitude for the progressiveness and advocacy of our funding community. Thank you. Let's give them applause. Applause for their partners. Now, none of us would be here if we didn't want to get to know some artists. So if you're a Carnaval playwright, will you please stand up? Playwrights, playwrights. Close to half. Thank you. 
If you are a Carnival director, if you're a director, please stand up. I see you. I see you. Dramaturg, dramaturg, please stand up. Designers, designers, please stand up. Actors, if you're a Carnival actor, please stand up. Yes. Yes. Look at this astonishing wealth of talent and more to come. Don't sit down yet, there's more to come. Um, uh, this is only a portion of the, of the actors that you'll see, the rest you'll see in the readings themselves, but this is an astonishing wealth of talent. Turn around, wave to the camera. We're live on HowlRound. And again, before sitting, please imagine a silver thread connecting all of these artists to one another and all of them to each of you and you to them. Have a seat. The theme of this year's Carnaval is Conexión. And our very thoughtful and playful programming committee put their minds to creating opportunities to forge meaningful connections beyond the standard speed dating or drink at the bar, although the drink at the bar is pretty awesome and there'll be plenty of those. Um, in your bags, and I'm gonna tell you about some of these. In your bags, you'll find a little red booklet, and of course, you picked up some stickers at the front desk. Now, I'm not going to tell you about that conexión opportunity, because Kevin Becerra and Diane Rodriguez are going to tell you about it in just a minute. But on your, lander, on your lanyard, you'll find a handy jump drive. See? Jump drive. You got it? That jump drive has the 25 Carnaval finalist plays, including the six you'll hear this weekend. It also has bios for all participants. Actor bios, a digital copy of the program. Listen, you don't need to Google anybody. You've got all the information right here. It also has a digital copy of the welcome packet in case you didn't pick one up at registration and need to find a restaurant or you get lost. After each reading, you'll have the opportunity to get to know the artists in our artist talks, during which the dramaturgs will interview the playwrights and the directors will lead the designers in a conversation about how they might approach the play. On the back of your name tags, you'll see you have an airline. Yes, an airline. Yes, you have to make your connection. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was very generous of you. It's very generous. Your airline signifies your small group. And you'll have the opportunity to make your first series of new connections at lunch today. We're providing box lunches for, uh, where you can meet with your small group. And then on Saturday, you and your small group are going to engage in a mystery challenge together. And I'm not telling you about that challenge yet because it's a mystery. <laughs> On Saturday morning, you have the opportunity to connect with some of the pillars of Chicago's vibrant Latinx theater making community when you go to one of the following, also on the back of your name tag, Urban Theater Company in the Puerto Rican neighborhood of Humboldt Park. Aggie Home Theater in the Peruvian, Mexican, and mixed Latinx neighborhood of Belmont Cregan. The Chicago Latino Theater Alliance, or CLATA, at the National Museum of Mexican Art in Pilsen and Teatro Vista, which is a Latinx island here in Lincoln Park. <laughs> Following each visit, you'll have an amazing lunch at a local restaurant on us. And of course, we have three evenings full of fun together. So we hope that each of you will take advantage of the many opportunities available to forge meaningful new connections with folks you haven't yet met, and deepen your connections with those you know and love because my friends, these are dark times. This administration has communicated loud and clear its hatred and contempt towards Latinx people, towards Latin American people, towards people of color in general, towards the LGBTQ plus community and the differently abled community, as well as I heard lately the Canadians. I mean, who hates Canadians? <laughs> and apparently the only people they do like are the Russians. But all joking aside, this administration gains its power and creates its danger by fomenting and feeding a sense of hopelessness, a sense that there's not enough to go around, a sense of deep division. We defy this administration with a spirit of celebration, of abundance, and of connection.
We are all one another's keepers, my friends. We are all connected. And we are all citizens of these great Americas. Thank you. And now I'd like to bring to this stage my friend and colleague and renowned lighting designer, the Dean of the Theater School at DePaul University, John Colbert. Thank you, Lisa. Hey, and in case you couldn't tell, Lisa is passionate. <laughs> passionate, passionate about life, passionate about theater. She's articulate, both verbally and uh, through action. Uh, about the power of theater to tell critical stories that should and will change our world. So, Lisa, thank you for sharing that passion with the theater school, with our students, with all of us, with, with uh, Carnival, and with the world. Okay. So, welcome to our theater here, and welcome to our home. Uh, last time you were here with us in 2015, this building was brand new. Uh, happily, we've dinged it up a bit in the meantime, <laughs> which makes it feel a little more theatrical. It has stories to tell. And uh, uh, like the story of the pipe that burst on the Christmas night when nobody was here to discover it for a while. But that's a story for another time. Um, We've learned a lot about the impact of this building on our school, our students, and ourselves in those few years. First, uh, when you walk in the door of the building and you first get a sense of the uh, integrity and beauty that comes from a very purpose-built, very specialized building, like, like a barn or a steel mill or a concert hall, you get the feeling that they take this enterprise seriously here. And we do. And that enterprise here is the making of theater artists. We know we are privileged to have the kind of support this enterprise requires. Support from DePaul, support from the philanthropic community, support from alums, support from the theater community and the theater profession, support from our students and their families. And with privilege, as always, comes responsibility and we take that seriously as well. So next, um, this building makes time. And the fact that we had the opportunity to design a building that has spaces in it and support within it that actually uh, supports the crazy things we do here every day as a theater school means that our faculty, staff, and students spend more time on things that matter than we used to. So that, in my, in my uh, experience as an administrator, um, time is the most difficult resource to come up with. Money, you can always figure out one way or another. Time, you can't, I, I don't know how to do that. So, so the fact that the building is, is, allows us to spend time, more time on things that matter has really been important to us. Uh, and also, the building enables us to have you here to do the work that you do. So I want to say something about why that's important to us. Um, so I'd like to uh, read a statement that the community, the theater school community created in an effort to define ourselves. We call it our diversity action statement. The theater school is committed to fostering and nurturing the reality of who people are, who they have been, and who they want to be. We embrace the diversity of what we see, what we hear, and what we feel. We give voice. We represent people and ideas. Our community engages in lively exploration between and beyond categories of race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, class, religion, nationality, ability, and artistic discipline. We examine, appreciate, and share the complexities of culture through artistic collaboration and by doing so, create a safe and supportive environment for our students, faculty, staff, audience, and visitors. So the work that you do, this convening of Latinx theater artists from around the country, and the development of new voices and new plays could not be more relevant 
to the goals of the theater school and our dreams and plans for our students as they go on to create our future. Finally, I wouldn't be doing my job as dean if I didn't tell you about some of the new things that we're excited about here at the theater school. We're starting a comedy arts program. That will be an adventure for sure. Um, we're starting a projection design program. Yeah. Great. If you know anybody who's interested, send them our way. There aren't very many. It's a BFA projection design program. There aren't very many in the country, so, so we're uh, excited to be offering that. We're also starting a summer high school theater program that will use Chicago as a classroom and will also uh, represent the values of the theater school to that generation of theater artists. And we started uh, a production series called Prototypes. It's a completely student-managed, student-implemented, student-orchestrated um, uh, production series that will be part of our season. And it will enable students on our productions to work in, in cross-disciplinary ways and to encourage entrepreneurial exploration, which is what they'll do when they get out of here. So we're, um, this week, it's been a real pleasure to feel the, the heat of creative energy as your teams worked on productions in this building. And, and you combine that with the energy that, of all of you being here this morning, and that is truly inspiring. So on behalf of the entire theater school community, thank you for being here. Thank you to Teatro Vista, Alta, and all who worked so hard to make this happen, all of you here in this room. And so thank you for commitment to Latinx work in our theaters, new work in our theaters, and underrepresented voices in our theaters. Have a great carnival. And now I'd like to welcome to, this, to the podium here, uh, I'd like to introduce Nancy Garcia Loza and Lucas Garcia, host committee uh, members. This is going to be cute. Dun, dun, dun. Imagine a thread. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Welcome. On behalf of the Alliance of Latinx Theater Artists of Chicago, we are so excited that Carnaval 2018 has arrived. We're thrilled to see you here in Chicago and pleased you'll be joining us for an incredible weekend of community building, celebration, and to experience the amazing talents that have been assembled. ALTA was founded in 2010 by Tania Saracho and Ricardo Gutierrez as a way of building connections, both professional and personal, for Latinx theater artists and makers. ALTA exists to be a nexus for the thriving landscape of Latinx theater artists in Chicagoland area. We are a volunteering organization dedicated to furthering the Chicago Latinx theater movement by promoting, educating, representing, and unifying Latinx identified artists and their allies. Ding. We are so proud to announce the first ever Alta Awards to be held on October 8th at Victory Garden Theater. The Alta Awards will be a community celebration of the achievements of Chicagoland Latinx theater artists and makers. With over 240 members, Alta seeks to leverage the collective investment of its membership to recognize and uplift the contributions of their peers to the ever-evolving landscape of Latinx theater. As you may already know, uh, the Alliance of Latinx Theater Artists, or ALTA for short, has been working very hard with the LTC to prepare for this convening, and we have a wonderful night planned for you tonight at Victory Gardens. Noche Victoria will feature incredible local artists, including... Melissa Dupre. Gabe Ruiz. Marvin Quijada. The fabulous Micha, Michelle Rodriguez. Jasmine Cárdenas. The incredible Famelinen. Albany Park Theater Project with a piece written by our own Isaac Gomez. Hey. Our host committee members all have a red flowered border along the bottom of our badges, um, and we will have volunteers present throughout this weekend. 
um, if you have any questions or if you need some direction or if you just want to talk, um, <laughs> please feel free to come ask us. In an effort to help you find us easier, um, if, the, if the members of the Alta Host Committee and the Alta Host Volunteers, if you can please stand up. I know we've been doing a lot of that, <laughs> but if you can just stand up and just give us a wave. Everyone look around you. If you see any of us around, ask us all the things, talk to us, whatever that is. We're here to welcome you and to help you have a really excellent time this weekend. And thank you to all of our volunteers, <laughs> our core team, and to everyone helping to make this year's Carnaval a success. Thank you. <laughs>
when it comes to selection and curation of work, okay? Here's the reality. For the most Latinx identified playwrights, whether or not they're aware of it themselves, most of our plays, and I know I'm speaking very generally and broadly here, but I'm telling you, I've read a lot, <laughs> like in the hundreds, so my, 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 my qualitative measurements feel appropriate in this moment, in that do not follow Aristotle's poetics. They just don't. So you, in most plays, you won't find your typically standard introducing plot point, rising action, climax, falling action model. And for those who are not used to reading plays outside of that, uh, uh, that structure, it can be a challenge to access that play. I have sat in selection panels with colleagues of mine whom I have dear admiration and respect for who will want to dismiss a play because it quote unquote lacks, a, a, they're not dramaturgically sound. And where I ask my colleagues in the room today and where I hope to hold you accountable, especially now as, as, a, as an artist and not necessarily as someone who facilitates new play development as, as my profession, is to critically ask yourself why. If you're feeling a certain way about a play, ask yourself why. And I'm here to tell you, and when it comes to taste, the rigor of the selection pool was phenomenal. These are some of the, in my opinion, some of the best, most prolific playwrights in the country right now. Not just the six that are featured this weekend, but the 130 that submitted their work. Because they were writing from a place that most people have never experienced before. And even for me, painful new awarenesses in the plays that I had been reading. And in the conversations with the 15 of us, complete awe and admiration for the stories that were being told. It was a hard selection process. When we came down to the final 10 or 12, it was brutal. It was painful because there were so many, and, and it's a painful reality that Carnaval has to even exist to say, here's, here's, a, here's a plate for you, right? And so I encourage you to get to know the writers who are in the city this weekend. I encourage you to have coffee with them. I encourage you to reach out to them and to find a time and an opportunity co to connect in a way that perhaps you have yet to. And to find, meet the writer where they are. That's been my key dramaturgical philosophy in my brief, but I think pretty successful career when I was at Victory Gardens. Meet the writer where they are. Amplify the story they want to tell instead of trying to tell it for them, right? That's such a huge, huge key point when it comes to new play development. And that was a key selection process for us. Where is the, what is the writer trying to do? How successful are they at doing that? Is this a story we haven't heard before? How excited are we by these stories, right? There's such a breadth of experience in the multiplicities of what it means to be Latinx. It is unfair to say that the six plays occupy those identities in all its multiplicities. But I can say they occupy some, and they're beautiful, and they're nuanced, and they're complex, and they're beyond the narratives that we are traditionally seeing on television and film and theater that occupy the also somewhat relative, but you know, in all transparency, um, over-exhausted stereotypes like the immigrant, the maid, the criminal, um, the, someone who doesn't speak English. There's Latinx millennials. There's mixed race Latinx. There's Afro Latinx. They're queer Latinx. There's a multiplicity of what it means to be who we are. And I hope you get a sample of what that looks like today or this weekend. When it comes to dramaturgy curation, that was a big part of my um, um, uh, sort of thought and facilitation process of trying to pair the writers with the dramaturgs of whom I so very subjectively felt could meet the writer where they were. And hilariously enough, the majority of, of, of the dramaturgs are also writers in their own right in vain, in a different capacity, whether it's in playwriting, in poetry, or in scholarship. Why? Because a writer knows what a writer needs, and a writer can meet them where they are without that barrier. Every single dramaturg that you'll see is Latinx. And even to this day, I still get um, um, an email every now and then saying, Isaac, you're the only Latinx dramaturg. Can you, can you come to this part of the country and dramaturg this show for us? And I very kindly say, actually, here's a whole list. There's a lot. There are so many of us. It's about redefining what it means to be a dramaturg. It's not about holding a bachelor, master's, or PhD degree, as proud as I am of my colleagues who hold those identities. It's about being able to have that cultural context 
to meet the writer where they are, to amplify the story that the writer is already trying to tell, and to be a champion in every sense of the word. That's what it means to be a dramaturg. And every single dramaturg that was paired with every writer this weekend, all six of them are some of the fiercest champions, advocates, and support of new work that I have ever had the pleasure of working with. As you experience the plays this weekend, I wanna remind you that um, to help the Latinx theater community means to help us live in a place of abundance versus scarcity. As you continue to go back to your home theaters, whether they're um, theaters of color or predominantly white institutions, ask your staff, ask your artistic leadership, does there have to only be one? How or in what way can we find more opportunities to tell the multiplicities of who we are? We occupy an overwhelming majority of people in this country, yet are severely underrepresented in theater, in television, and film. I ask my colleagues, a charge I give my fellow gatekeepers, help us make that change. Help us see ourselves on your stages. Help us tell our stories in our way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Isaac. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christopher Acebo. I'm the uh, Associate Artistic Director at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, and I had the great honor to um, curate the designer component of uh, this week's um, Carnaval. Um, uh, Inclusion can be difficult, especially when you have the breadth of an extraordinary community of Latinx designers to invite as participants in the Latino Theater Commons Carnaval of New Latinx Work. Our challenge was to put together a group of artists that showed a fraction of that breadth, looking at gender, age, regionalism, as well as new emerging artists and veteranos in the field. Uh, then assign those designers to teams working with directors, actors, and dramaturgs over the course of a week to support a writer's new play. Um, this group emerged to participate as the first LTC Carnival designer cohort, um, but so many essential artists were not able to be included in this round. Uh, many of those designers are in this space as we speak. Um, but the vision was to bring together these working designers into a new play development process to engage, share, react, imagine, and build relationships with new colleagues. Many of these designers I have known or admired for years. Some recently came into my view, some as recently as last night. Um, <laughs> but they all share a deep passion for collaboration in an art form that demands either visualizing or creating sound in support of whatever event we're putting together. Um, but what emerges with these artists who identify within the, concept, the vast scope of what it means to be Latinx um, is a very powerful question. How do we, or how do the politics of who we are inform the aesthetic in our art form? especially during what feels like being in the midst of battle. The Latinx Theater Commons and this Carnaval of New Latinx work and the Encuentros in Los Angeles, as well as all the other regional gatherings, show us how crucial it is to be in conversations, not just with the work that we are creating, but also with the world in which we are living in and what it means to be Latinx theater artists in this 21st century America. So with intention, these 12 artists in four disciplines are here to show the impact of that aesthetic. And it has been an honor to be asked to curate this cohort. What I observe in these artists' work is a sense of exploring shifting ground and conflicts within space and style sounds of an America that battle and then attempt to find peace, and ultimately a deep pride and joy to work on plays that speak to our lives, uh, to our histories, and to our communities. Thank you very much. Ooh. 
in curating directors for, the, uh, for a new play festival, the first consideration is, of course, the play. For each play, you're looking to find a director whose artistic soul aligns with the soul of the play. Not necessarily the playwright, actually, but with the play, although one hopes, right? Um, but the play itself. I'll never forget Shirley Fishman, direct, uh, dramaturg at the La Jolla Playhouse, saying to me once, I love the playwright, but I love the play Moa. Within the context of the Carnaval, of course, we sought to amplify the voices of six Latinx directors, knowing, as Chris mentioned, that they're just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to terrific Latinx directors around the country. Beyond, beyond that, we wanted to uh, represent geographically. We've got East Coast, West Coast, and Central Region. We wanted to uplift gender parity and create a mix of directors who are up and coming into the field and those who've been at it for a while. But like I said, these six terrific directors represent a much larger population of talented Latinx directors across our nation. You know, I recently represented SDC at a LORT pre-conference on equity and hiring. And in my small, you know, we do small group discussions. In our, my small group discussion, one person said, very frankly, and I appreciate frankness, that hiring has to do with comfort. People hire based on comfort. And that then we find ourselves in ruts of comfort. And that's how directors of color end up making up just 15% of the total directors hired in Lort theaters nationwide over the last five seasons. This is all directors of color. Latin, Latin, that's all directors of color, Latinx, African American, Asian American, indigenous. Um, Latinx directors make up about 4%. 15% directors of color hired in Lort theaters nationwide over the last five seasons. That means hiring is 85% white. And incidentally, according to USA, the, uh, uh, the design union, designers of color make up just 13% of all designers hired. And I can just imagine what it's like for dramaturgs of color. Comfort. So I guess my hope would be that we all take advantage of opportunities like this one to expand our circles of comfort, or perhaps just leap out of our comfort zones and come to know one another. Because like I said, and my colleagues Chris and Isaac have said, these six Latinx directors, six Latinx dramaturgs, and 12 Latinx designers are just a small sample of the talent that's out there. And now, I'd like to bring to the stage Kevin Becerra and Diane Rodriguez, who will tell you a little bit about those little red books. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Okay, um, you know how you all come to, um, you know how you all have a Thea who, uh, who, you know, who comes to family parties loaded with like prizes and uh, games and uh, nobody wants to play. But you know, she forces you. And then you have a really good time, but you don't want to admit it. <laughs> well, this is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more fun, okay? <laughs> so, okay, we know that in this room there's a, a, a wealth of experience and, and talent and knowledge. And we're gathered here in the spirit of hearing new plays and connecting with new colleagues in the field, which is so important. The, our theme, Conexión, is a call to action. It's encouraging us to expand our networks, find new people in the field to champion, and hopefully future collaborators. Yeah, so we wanted something tangible to kind of help us through this practice. Diane just took the script out oh, in front oh, of me. It's okay, it's all right. It's collaborative, it's fine. Dear Diane. Okay, okay so. <laughs> Don't bust me. <laughs> We wanted something tangible to track these connections, right? We didn't want to leave the work to business cards because sure, they're lovely and they're so carefully designed, thank you for the aesthetic, but they all end up floating around the free tote, never to be seen again, right? So we wanted something that we would be proud to interact with and have fun interacting with. So the thought of Conexión, 
and the motif of air travel brought us to the idea of a passport. But as we all know, documentation has become a very complex and dangerous conversation for so many in our community. We wanted something fun, right? We wanted something that kind of activates the excitement that Lisa feels about her not at all nerdy National Park passport, right? Stamping and marking each trip that she makes. And something that brings an intense, <laughs> deeply meaningful emotional connection, like my Disneyland autograph book, <laughs> proving that I met Cinderella at a very young age. So, so uh, okay, all of you have your red books, right? Okay, let's see them, let's see them, let's see them. Okay, cool, cool, all right. So, um, now uh, look at them, and then you'll see that there's a lot of blank pages uh, broken into fours. So at registration, then you selected your stickers that best represent you in, in, your, in the theater ecosystem. And I know that was a really, I just want to name, I know that was a hard process for many of you to choose the right. one sticker. But if, for the sake of the game and the sake of the weekend, thank you for doing it. It's going to make it easier, I promise. So the way this is going to work is that as you meet someone, as you make your conexión, You'll put their sticker in the little quadrant and you'll write, it'll have the person write their name and a way to contact them, right? So maybe it's an email address, maybe it's like a really cool Twitter handle or their Insta, but some way to, that's easy to follow up with them. Uh, and if the ritual of having a new friend write their name in your booklet isn't quite enough inspiration for you, there is a super cool, super secret mystery prize that will be given to those on Saturday night who have filled out their all pass with um, stickers of Conexion. Cool. So, so we really encourage you to, to, to play with us, but this is also an opportunity to really name what we commit to by being in this room. So, and as the commons, we, we gather to share our energy and our resources towards creating a community grounded in shared values. So in this moment, we'd like to speak these commitments into the space where we'll spend so much time over the next few days. In the spirit of the commons, could we have five volunteers join us on stage, bringing with you your all pass and some stickers? Come on up, come on up. Five people, all right? So we're gonna read the commitments uh, that are in the, uh, in the all pass, and we're gonna have, um, I'm gonna grab a microphone in a minute, and then we're gonna uh, have Diane kick us off. Thank you so much. Great, I'll start. I'll start. So at that very first page, I'll read the bottom, which says, the user of this all pass transcends borders, defies boundaries, and welcomes conexión. So as, as a participant, I commit to unite around a common purpose to create authentic connections with participating artists theater makers and scholars I do not yet know. Respect and reciprocate. To honor the time and the space by acknowledging the leaders and artists who have paved the way and have done and continue to do the work around us and commit to mentor others who might look at me for guidance. To practice humble learning to admit that there is always room to learn, keep an open mind, and listen attentively and from a place of generosity. Activate my network, to use my access and position to propel this movement in a way that is honest and urgent. Exercise grateful accountability. To act as an agent of grateful accountability by holding organizers and fellow participants accountable for their commitments. Thank you. So all of you, if you agree to these commitments, please say, I will. I will. Cool. Great. Now let's make a conexión. <laughs> Find a person near you. We're going to call this our uh, peace be with you moment. <laughs> Find a, yeah. Oh, there's Catholics in the house. <laughs> or former Catholics. Uh, all right, so find a person near you and take a moment to swap names, contact information, and stickers. Just take a quick minute to do this. And have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs>